Hey guys and welcome back to You Nico Dev. This is part 4 of a mini series I've been doing on my channel which regards creating a Firebase chat. Now in this last episode, as I said before, we are going to implement a profanity filter and also we're gonna secure the rules for our database so that nobody can, uh, you know, access in a wrong way and we're gonna see how to do that. Now before starting I just wanted to see what we have done so far, as you can see we can send messages and we can also edit our messages, uh, yes, for example if I change something I can edit it and also we can delete previous messages. So this is what we implemented so far, now we need a way for something external to delete or edit a message, uh, you know, in case there is some profanity or something like that. And now for the sake of this example, we are gonna try to alter the profanity of the F word. So if somebody types the F word in the chat, he, you know, the, the F word is going to be changed to something else. Now just for reference, I will say the F word right now and then not say it anymore, the F word is Fortnite. So if the user says a profanity like I just said, that profanity will be changed to another um, word that probably will be, you know, a better game or, you know, something better than that profanity F word uh, Fortnite. Oh no, I said it again. Okay, but let's begin. So the first thing you want to do is navigate to an empty folder and I already showed this in the cloud functions tutorial uh, and you can check that out so I'm not gonna be in depth right here and you can just do Firebase in it. Naturally you need to have the Firebase package as an npm package uh, but you can see all of the links in the description in order to do that. And what we're gonna need today is gonna be the functions so we just select the functions and we're gonna use the existing project which is the tutorial project. Okay, great, let me put this full screen. Be sure to use JavaScript and also do yes, yes. Okay, and now we wait. Okay, great, and now if we go into our previously empty folder, we have the functions and inside of here we have the index.javascript file, uh, which we can open and as you can see it already has a function here. Now I'm not gonna go in depth uh, about uh, cloud functions because I already made a video on that, but we just need to add this functionality. We're gonna call this function profanity filter. And it doesn't have to be an on request function, but it actually needs to get triggered when we modify something on the database, uh, especially in the messages. All right, and the data needs to be changed on write, meaning either when the message is created, updated or deleted. And this is gonna be the path, and I don't remember like how we set up the code or the database structure. I guess we can check it out from Firebase. Uh, it should be in the messages branch. And then we're gonna be, we're gonna have the message ID, so we can just make this uh, like this. And then we're gonna have, and then we're gonna have our text. Now, naturally, if you wanted to implement like a more complex system, instead of looking for the text, you could look for the entire message. So you also knew who sent the message, and maybe you can punish the user because he said uh, the 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 profanity. But in this case, we're only gonna change the text, so we're not gonna worry about all of that business. So this means that this snapshot and the snapshot after this one is gonna be exactly a string and this string is gonna be the text. Okay, so now we just have to do some JavaScript to check if the text contains that word and if it does, replace it with another word. So this is gonna be the text and then we can just do text.replace and the original word is gonna be the F word and the modified better uh, version is gonna be Minecraft. <laughs> okay, this should work. Now we should have the updated text and now we can put this updated text back into our text. So we can do snapshot dot, uh, dot set and then right here we can set the updated text. All right, and naturally we don't need the response dot send. We actually just need to return something. And I guess we can return the updated text. This actually doesn't matter. It's gonna be just something returned to when the function is called. Alright, now we can go here and deploy. Probably I did a mistake, but I, I don't know. Well, I did a mistake right there. Oh my gosh. Oh, one thing that you might actually want to change is actually check if there, there is, to begin with, the profanity. Because if there, if there is not, there is no need to update the text and then do a request to the database. Remember that, you know, if you are setting up payment for Firebase and you are looking for a lot of users, uh, you know, this is gonna be expensive and it's not the best way to go about this. This is just an example to show you how you can expand the real-time database and our chat system using cloud functions. Uh, but naturally, uh, you know, this is like we're pushing 
every single text twice. Because we are first uploading it once, and then the cloud function receives it and uploads it again. So, you know, there are a lot of ways to optimize this profanity filter. Alright, and now let's try to send a message. Oh yeah, and sorry, here I forgot to do dot ref. Here we go. Okay guys, and here we go, the moment of truth. I am gonna put here the profanity F word, and if we put send, okay, as you can see, we'll get changed to Minecraft. And I think I, even if I put a lot of stuff at the beginning, yeah, it will still change it. Yeah, it will still change it. So yeah, naturally you can play around with this and probably there are some APIs that already do this for you and do all of the profanity filtering. But all that I wanted to show you is that, you, you know, you can get the text, you can do some work with it, and then you can uh, set the updated text. Okay, great. And now that we're done with this, let's actually work on security. So we have to work on our database rules. Now, just like the cloud functions, I already did a video on security rules. I think there was a two episodes uh, mini series, so you can go check that out if you want a more complete guide. But now we are just gonna cover the basics and try to do the rules for this database. And so I should make everybody able to read the users folder and everybody already um, able to read the messages folder, uh, but only the user itself has to be able to, you know, write his new nickname if he ever wants to change it. So let's start by implementing that. So right here in our rules, we can add uh, messages and we can add users. So right now, both in messages and in users, everybody is able to read and write. We want that everybody really is able to read, yes, but in users, the only people that can write are, and I think I actually have to get more specific for this, so I have to go one layer deeper and I have to go to user ID, we can call it UID, there and right here, you can only write if you are in your user ID. So if my auth.uid is equal to the UID. Okay, and this in theory should work. Naturally, we can test this using the playground. So if I'm authenticated and I have a UID of one, let's say, if I go to users, it's not gonna let me in. Uh, if it's a read request, okay, no, it's not gonna let me in anyway. If I go to user and one, it's gonna let me in. But it's gonna let me in even if I go to user and some weird number, because the read is always allowed. While if I do a write or an update, uh, it's not gonna let me in. Yes, but if this is one, it is gonna let me in. Correct. Okay, so this works. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is the branch of the messages, and I'm gonna spend more time on this branch because, you know, uh, it, mat it matters the most, okay? We have to make sure that a user cannot incorrectly impersonate another user or something like that. All right, instead, for the messages rules, reading should be allowed everywhere. Well, instead, reading or writing should only be allowed under certain conditions. And the conditions are that under each message that we send, that we write in, uh, the sender user ID has to correspond to our actual user ID. This way we know that the user is not impersonating another person's message, and whatever he is sending is actually his message, he's not impersonating as someone else. And we can do this quite simply like this. First of all, let's go into a generic message by using this wildcard. So message ID and then do column and then add this one. And at the dot write, we can add this code right here. And I have to put that in quotation. Okay, like this. Basically, it will check the data that is being posted and it will check if this data has a child, which is the sender user ID child, okay? So it will look for this value right here. And now we just have to say this value, okay, has to be equal to the authentication UID. Okay, but this is only checking for new data that is coming in, but we still have to check also the old data. And the reason we need to do that is because users don't only uh, have the privilege to create a message, but they can also edit and delete messages. And naturally, we have to make sure that they can only delete their messages and edit their messages and not anyone else's. So that's why right here, instead of only checking for the new data, we also have to che check for the old data. Now there is only one problem, like we're almost done, this is the last thing we need to change, is that the new data, uh, as well as the data itself, which is the old one, can be uh, null. 
The normal data will be null if we are creating a new message, well the new data will be null if we are deleting a message because we are basically setting the entire thing to null. So basically we have to check if the d new data dot exists and if it doesn't exist we have to allow the request regardless. So we can put this code right here uh, in parentheses and we can do something like this. And now we can do the exact same thing with the data so I can just copy the code that we used right here and put it right here. Bam, and instead of new data, I can put data. And in theory, this should work. Okay, I was able to publish it. And now I can check it out in the rules playground. Okay, let's try to do a write request on messages and a random message ID. And inside the request, we put the sender user ID as a key and the value can still be value. Okay, and we're gonna be authenticated and we're gonna be authenticated as the user ID value. So in this case, it should work because the user ID and the message that I'm sending are matching. And as you can see, it worked, but if we change any of these values and they don't match anymore, the request will not go through. Uh, similarly, <laughs> excuse me for the amount of messages, I did some testing. If I add the message 123 right here and I add a sender ID, sender user ID, and I make it value, then right here in the rules, if both of these are not value, but they are the same, for example, they could both be test, Okay, this will still not work because the value that is already on the database doesn't match these. So in theory, it should still give me an error and it doesn't. Oh, I figured it out. This doesn't have to be an OR gate, but it has to be an END because both of the conditions have to be met. And now if I hit run and not this one, I mean this one in between the two ones. Yes. Okay. And now if I hit run, as you can see, it will get denied. But if both of these are values, bam and bam, and we run is gonna be allowed. Okay, so lastly, before ending the video, I actually want to try to create a new account and see if everything works correctly on the client side too. Uh, everything should work correctly. Uh, let's create a new account like this. Uh, the nickname can be test, okay? And it, this could be the password. Uh, let's delete all of the messages that we currently have on the database because I did a bunch of texting. And uh, yeah, texting and testing. Uh, so let's delete all of that, sign up. And as you can see, we have the messages cleared right here. We uh, write a message. Oh, and it doesn't work because th this I forgot to change this from new data to data when I copy pasted the code. So it was just a typo. Okay, so now it's going to work. Great, the message is getting posted. And let's see, can I also edit it? Yes, the editing also works. And can I delete it? Yes, the deleting works. And as you can see, all of those actions have been made onto the database. So this means that our rules are not only secure, but they also work, which is a, <laughs> something really great, because if our rules actually um, don't make us do the request, it, it wouldn't be something really ideal. Uh, naturally, this is not it. You can expand these rules even more and try to validate more options and make sure maybe there is a character limit. You can add a character limit or you can make sure that uh, the user is actually sending a message. Right now, the user only has to send a user ID and the message could also be empty. So I don't know, you could check for a lot of stuff like that. But yeah, basically this is everything I wanted to show you in this video, but also in this mini series. I hope you enjoyed coding this little Firebase chat with me. The code for everything divided in the four, four episodes is going to be in the description. Uh, even if I still don't know how to include the database code in the description, I might include it into this folder right here. So this tutorial folder right here where we have the functions, I will also include the database rules right here and I will put this folder, I will call it Firebase and I will put it inside the Unity project. I guess nearby the assets folder in the same um, uh, mega folder that contains the entire project. So I will do that and push everything on GitHub and you know, you can check out the code in the description. Thank you ever so much for following this series to the very end. You are really amazing. Thank you ever so much for watching. And I'm going to see you guys in the next series, which could be about Firebase. Uh, it could be about how to make a multiplayer game in Firebase, which is something a lot of people requested, but also could be on machine learning. I know I always say this in my video, but no, I, I really want to get back on machine learning at some point. Anyway, yeah, this is all I wanted to say. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I'm going to see you guys next time. See ya!